Throughout history, the seashore plains of Israel and Palestine were mediated between local inhabitants and their great neighbors overseas to the west of the Mediterranean, Greeks, Romans, European crusaders, and others. It is a fertile region suffused with the constant threat of invasion and occupation, a landscape distorted by contradictory elements, economic and cultural prosperity on one side, the products of warfare, annihilation, and extinction on the other. Many of the invaders found the country appealing, settled in the area, and became part of its texture, adding another layer to the multi-ethnic and multicultural complexity of the region. One of the first groups of invaders to be recorded by history who settled in the seashore plains were the Philistines. The plains along the seashore became Philistia, ancient Palestine. The Philistines were just one group of a larger ethnic entity, denoted by scholars as the Sea People. The profound cultural crisis in the Aegean and Anatolian regions toward the end of the 13th century BCE led to a broad process of migration and settlement throughout the eastern part of the Mediterranean Basin. The Philistines were mariners who found a new homeland on the southern seashore of the land, just about the same time the ancient tribes we call Israel found their way to the central hill. They formed a confederation of five cities, at Pentapolis, three of which were harbor cities, Gaza, Ascalon, and Ashdod. The other two were situated on the inner land, Gat and Ekron. We are now in the Philistine temple on Tel Kassila. As you can see, a small but massive room made out of stone and mud bricks with two impressive columns at its center, one to my right and another one to my left. And the whole orientation of the building facing west toward the sea. This falls in line with other information that we know about the Philistines, their arrival from over the sea, and the stories about them in other sources. The Bible tells us that their religion was based on the worshiping of Dagon, a god who was half human and half fish. Their accessibility to the sea gave them other advantages, both economic and military, over their rivals. They were the first in the region to really benefit from the new metal brought into use in that period, iron. Most of all, they were locked in a deadly confrontation with the other settlers of the land, an amalgamation of tribes that came to be known as Israel. It was a win or vanish situation, since the two groups had nowhere else to go. Victorious at first, the Philistines lost to the Israelites, and they are never mentioned as a group in later sources. Their heritage, however, firstly their name, but also other features of their culture long lived after their disappearance, in many ways till this very day. Thirty-five hundred years have passed, but in many ways, nothing has changed at all. Today, too, two groups are locked 
in a deadly confrontation over the same territories. But this time, the Palestinians occupy the central hill, while the Israelis live in the seashore plains.